Nigeria has failed in democracy. Constitutionalism says former Minister of Education Obi Ezekwesili. And the PDP National Working Committee distances itself from the zoning rifts again in a number of states. Well, this is Cross Politics and I am Mary Ann Cole. Former Minister of Education in Nigeria has said the country had failed to practice democracy, federalism and constitutionalism. She noted that restructuring was the only way to save the nation. Obi Ezekwesili re-echoed the urgent need for the restructuring of the country, stressing that every geopolitical region dislikes the way the nation is presently constituted. Discussing this with me today is political technocrat Dayo Kayode and, of course, Executive Director, Electoral College of Nigeria, Kunli Lawal. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining this conversation. Pleasure to be here. All right. I'm going to start with you, Kunli. Um, put us through what you think the state of Nigeria's democracy is right now. Of course, you are part of a, a group of people who are trying to restructure the electioneering process in the country. Uh, I'm guessing that that is also so that it can help our democracy to be strengthened. So what do you think um, our democracy is like today, knowing that we're not as grown up as other people, but this is where we are right now. How well have we done? Well, um, I think I'll give Nigeria about 30% based on how we actually operate our, our systems entirely. Um, I would like to start with a few pointers. I think um, every, every year unit, uh, tribal unit in Nigeria is marginalized. I'm not talking about just um, uh, the region. And then we also have a problem where the states have kidnapped the autonomous natures of the local government. And this is a problem because the local government is the first handshake of democracy to the people. So when states have kidnapped that, you cannot talk about having an actual government because the last line that is actually supposed to be touching the, the core component, which is the core people, which is the, the, the electorate, is being kidnapped by the state government. And then let's also look at our constitution. As much as the constitution is damned and blamed, that's 99 constitution, I must say clearly at the state that even the constitution is not implemented up to 60%. So if it's not implemented up to 60%, what does it say if we get a new constitution, it's even going to be implemented at all? So Nigeria has a few problems in democracy, which makes us not a democracy. I'll call Nigeria rather a selectocracy. Thank you. Hmm. Um, Mr. Dayakayade, can you hear me? There are those who say that Nigeria's democracy is nascent. In other words, we cannot compare it to the United States' 300 plus years of democracy. Um, uh, and we also say that there's a Nigerian way of doing things, and hence the reason why our democracy is the way it is. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Could we do better? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Kayade. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Did you hear my question? Yes, I'm hearing you now. I'm hearing you now. Well, I said that there are people who say that Nigeria's democracy is nascent, we're still growing, we're still trying to understand what democracy is in its entirety. But then, of course, we cannot compare Nigeria's democracy to that of the U.S., which has been on for several years. And we also say that there's a Nigerian yeah. way of doing things. Has this Nigerian way of doing things helped us to grow our democracy, or is it destroying it? Yes, you see, when we're talking... When we're talking about our democratic uh, institutions as regards to uh, what Ezekiel is really said, interestingly, yes, we have some, like INEC, like uh, the judicial system, like uh, our other democratic... But the issue is this. Are they really working from beginning? That is one. Two, when Ezekiel Zili was in government, was she able to identify this? If she did it, why did she not? And if she did, what exactly the changes she brought into focus then? All right? Now, let us now leave that. Even between you and me, are our democratic institutions working the way it should work? 
Whereby somebody will win an election, and some people will go to the uh, uh, to court, and judiciary will now declare some other people the winner. Look at it. Look at what happened in. Uh, but, it, the, but but the but, but that is between, part of. Uh, but that's part of. Our, that's part of. But that's part of the democratic process. You have a right to take your case to court. You have a right to go there after no, an election but, if you're not the, satisfied. And you know how it is works it in a courthouse. I'm sorry, what did you say? It's part of the institution. When somebody, will win, when somebody will win an election, quite all right, and then you go to court, and the court will declare something else. Is this not part of the electoral process? Is the election not embedded in democracy? These are issues. In, I'm talking about, look at, for instance, uh, Ihe Dioha. Ihe Dioha and uh, uh, Uzo Dima, what's his name? These are issues. Look at what happened in uh, Kiti State during the during, uh, first time of uh, Shekboni and uh, Fayemi. And some other examples like that. Even when, before Osimi Amechi be, became the governor of the uh, of, uh, River State, then, these are all issues to be cited. So, so what, what, what exactly are you faulting? No. What exactly are you faulting in the democratic system? Because you're just um, pointing to se several, thing several things. Are you saying that our electoral system is flawed? Or are you saying that the judiciary in itself is flawed? What exactly are you pointing to? Because you're making so many statements and we're yet to put a finger on what exactly you're blaming for, you know, the breakdown of our <laughs> democratic see, system. You see, let me tell you this. Whatever we say today cannot diverge from the process of recalibrating Nigeria. I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with all these people talking about true federalism or, or restructuring. Because there is nothing in the first world like true federalism. It's either there is federalism or there is no federalism. And then those people talking about restructuring, is there even a structure in place of restructure? No. So not until when we recalibrate Nigeria and put it on a better step, all these things will not work. Because it's like a system. And democratic, uh, democratic institutions is just a subsystem within the system. It's not like your whole body now. When you have weak law on your, on your small finger, it will definitely affect the whole body. Okay. So, democratic institution is just a subsystem within the Nigerian system. So, okay. all I'm saying is we need to totally recalibrate and overhaul the entity called. Nigeria. Before we can get to that, no, the world of You're leading me to my next question. Just let's put a let's put a pin there. Mr. Kaede, let's put a pin there. I'll come back. To, I'll come back to it. Mr. Kaede, I'll come back to that. We need to talk about the you the recalibration. But let me go back to Kunle. Um, the former education minister has said that um, Nigeria needs restructuring. Um, she said that every geopolitical region in the country dislikes what's happening in the country right now. And this, of course, brings the issue of restructuring. Now, we know that restructuring has been a word that has been thrown around for decades by politicians. Uh, the big question is, why has nobody really gotten down to the issue of re restructuring? We always throw it around when it's either close to elections or when people are preparing for elections. We start hearing it, you know, and then maybe some last minute things are done, but we never really follow through to see that we can really get a restructuring process ongoing, kick started, and follow it through. We've never really seen that happen anywhere. We've had confabs, we've had conferences, but we've not really seen anything done with those reports. So, Kunle, what do you think the challenge is? Well, um, I'd like to use an analogy to explain my position, and it's very simple. Nigeria has always been seen as a buffet table. So it's always everybody waits for their turn at the buffet table before they actually get to doing what they are actually supposed to do. So the word restructure is just a magical word which all of us use but do not really care about because we are fed by the same system. And because we are fed by the same system, all we need to do is wait for our turn on Nigeria's buffet table. Um, and in that 
situations. Everybody is comfortable with everybody breaking the laws, except it's, it's up to politics where you think saying restructuring might be able to edge you against another candidate instead of actually running the system as it is. And I'll give you an example. I find it very funny when governors use the word restructuring. Have they returned the finances of the state to the local governments? Do they allow local governments to be autonomous? Or do they, do they allow their legislature to be autonomous? And you find some governors mentioning, I don't want to mention names, but you find some governors mentioning the word restructuring when they are actually the real problem why Nigeria is not restructured. You know, a lot of people tend to point fingers directly to the central. I believe the state is more guilty of, of, of devolution of powers, of separation of powers, and actually annihilating an entire tier of government, which is local government, so at this point, you find most people, when it's politically savvy to say so, or politically timely towards an election, or because you want to politically sound smart, you decide to use the word restructure. When the truth is, to the bottom line of everything, we are not ready to operate as a fully functional federation union. But what would it really cost us to, or when I say us, I'm talking about the government in power, because... Um, if you look at it from 1999, uh, from the military era to now, it's just been a recycling of almost the same set of people. What, is, what, ha, what would it cost these people to decide that, okay, let's restructure the country and see if this will work? I mean, we've done a lot of trial and error over the years, um, and we still seem to be going around in circles. So why not try something different? Why, what would it really cost a politician if they decide that, you know what, today we're going to steer this ship in a different direction? I can tell you what it will cost. It will cost, it will cost them their position. With a system that is fully functional, I don't believe 20% of the people in government to be in government. Number two, it's going to take away the so-called big finances when you have the juicy government position which they, of course, cannot seem to let go. You know, you can't ask, you can't ask um, a rat to, to move away from the cheese. You have to find a tactical way to get the cheese out of the, out of the reach of the rat. So finances are also key to stopping why this happens. Um, three would be, of course, it would be the end to godfathers in, in Nigerian politics and the birth of ideological politics. And I don't think anyone wants to see that happen because the truth is, I don't think any Nigerian, real Nigerian, has held political power in Nigeria. And by what I mean a real Nigerian, I mean someone who has the direct love for an entire nation. He's not biased by religion or nepotic biases. And because of that, these things can't happen. All right. Let me, let me come back to you, Mr. Kayede. Um, I would like to make reference to what uh, Obiaze Kwesili said. Uh, she said, Nigeria uh, has become an orphan since infancy. Um, and some people have referred to Nigeria before her, have referred to not just our democratic system as a failed system. Um, they have said that Nigeria is a failing state. Some have said it is a failed state. But what do you think the current situation of Nigeria is in terms of failure? Are we really a failed state? Are we failing? Are we on our way to failing? And what must we do to redeem it? Now, you see, when you're talking of democratic institutions or talking about our democracy to work, there are a lot of variables involved. And without taking care of these variables, there is no way it will work. I will just give you an I mean, a very small analogy now. And I want you to also relate it to where democracy works for us to be able to know that most of these variables need to be taken care of. Look at what is happening in National Assembly, to be precise, the Senate. Talking about uh, control of uh, our wages of the workers. Are we talking of minimum I mean, uh, 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 are we talking about uh, what the government asked for, minimum wage? Or we want to talk about sustainable living standards? Because whether you like it or not, the, I mean, we, the populace, are much more involved in democracy. And for democracy to work, the populace 
must be okay. When, when you are saying 30,000 minimum wage, today they will not increase uh, the how much you pay for life. They will increase pump, uh, prices of pump price. They will increase VAT. They will increase this and that. We need to be up to 30,000 again. But if we can look at something like sustainable minimum living standard, they know that any increase in some of these things will have altered that sustainability. Hmm. Are you with me? And then that means any percentage increase in anything must affect percentage increase in that sustainability. So when people are living like human beings, you will see our democracy working. You will see people going to the field without collecting money from politicians. You will see INEC officials working without getting money for them to be induced to tell you results the way we have been seeing it. Okay. You will see uh, uh, electoral officers coming up with the necessary voting and results rather than getting to where you are supposed to read our results and then they'll be blabbing their mouths. So my sis, these are issues that need to be taken care of. There okay. are a lot of factors. Okay. It has it has a, a, a multi, that needs multidisciplinary approach. All right. All right. Not until when we see that we won't get to anywhere. All right, uh, Mr. Daya Kaede, thank you very much. Well, we're being joined right now by Professor Richard Wakocha. He is uh, um, a professor of law. And we need him in this conversation because he's going to give us some background into the restructuring process. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us out of your tight schedule. Thank you. So um, every time we talk about restructuring, like I said at, at the beginning of the conversation, politicians, a lot of them, throw around the word restructuring um, and sometimes one would really wonder, do they mean it? Do they understand what it is? Because I've heard people ask questions like, what kind of restructuring are we talking about? Are there two types of restructuring when it comes to the Nigerian state? Well, um, we talk of restructuring because there is something wrong with our structure. Uh, we are supposed to be a federal state. And being a federal state means that you have a central government and unit governments that are largely exhibit a fair degree of autonomy, uh, which have responsibility for what they want to do and take care of their lives by themselves. Uh, long and short of it is that the units in the federation um, have authority and capacity to generate income and to utilize the income to pursue their development goal. Now, if you have a federal system where the structure is different, such as we have in Nigeria, where the bulk of the income or all income goes to the center, and then the center allocates something to the units, then you are definitely not practicing federalism. Because in federalism, the units should take care of themselves and make contribution to the center for sustaining the national government. So we talk of restructuring in Nigeria because uh, we have said we are a federal state, and we have written that into our constitution, uh, but quite a number of provisions in our constitution, as well as our practice, uh, shows that we are a unitary state. So each time we say restructure, we are saying, take us back to what we are supposed to be. Uh, make amendments to the constitution, correct the things that are in the law. Uh, I think um, the professor froze up there. Uh, but let's talk about CONFABS. I'm coming back to you, Kunle. Um, you are of, again, the Electoral College, and um, there's a lot that the Electoral College hopes to change or um, bring about in the Nigerian um, state. But let's talk about these CONFABS. I'm talking about the one that happened under the Obasanjo government. We had one, um, the National CONFAB under the Goodluck Jonathan administration. We even had an APC committee on restructuring. Where are all of these reports, and what has been done? Uh, with these reports. Why are we still having to talk about this over and over again when there's several reports that I'm guessing um, have interesting ideas as to how we can reposition and restructure the Nigerian state? You know, the, um, thank you very much. The, the, the issue with Nigeria has never been 
the lost term weakness of ideas or the inability to converge and sit down and come up with a blueprint which I think is best in the world. Nigeria has some of the greatest minds in the world and has put together within its papers from restructuring to finance to the entire corrupt uh, governance system put out the best thing. Nigeria's problem has always lain in one singular place, the ineffectiveness of the National Assembly to pass laws that are necessary and then for the uh, institutions concerned to enforce implementation. We have never had a problem with coming up with ideas or had a problem with building governance solutions. We have, I've looked at a lot of Nigerian governance solutions and trust me, they're like the best in the world. Our problems has always been the same from 93 till present and which are implementation of this thing. The Nigeria has a serious flaw or whoever is being handed something. And, and when you look at it, you, you then beg the question, why is implementation so hard? In a country that has more than 1,500 ministries, departments, and agents, with counterlining functions of almost every ministry, department, and agency, it's so clear why we do not function or, or we do not know who is to enforce. Like now, if we're to follow something about corruption, are we going to call on the ICPC or the EFC? Or if you commit is that a crime driving, is it the VIO, is it this, is it that, is it the FRS? You see, these problems that we massively have are the reasons why we can't sit down and implement a singular thing. And there's also a, a clause within a problem within our system. The judiciary who is to come in and interpret the law seems to have a problem because the, the attorney general serves at the, at the pleasure of the president. president. And then at that point, yes, yes, that was the pleasure of the president. So, at that point, you kind of have a loss with the separation of powers and a problem within the entire institution of governance. Hmm. Professor Walker, I one more uh, for you again on this issue of confabs and um, on the issue of restructuring. These confabs, they've come in different, under different names. In fact, we've had people ask for constitutional um, conferences. Uh, the question is, if the law is having to clash with some of these moves and ideas that politicians bring to bear. Um, really, can we ask for a change in our constitution if we don't really realize that we need to change that paper, we need to change that document? So if we're having a constitutional conference, what do we need to make it happen? And when we're done having that conference, how do we make sure that whatever papers that we come up with or whatever reports we come up with can be implemented without the law also being uh, some form of a stumbling block? <clears throat> well, um, we've always gotten a number of things wrong about our confabs. Uh, if you are going to have a constitutional conference, uh, by whatever name you call it, you need to have representatives of the peoples of the country. And if you must operate with the states as we have them, that's all right. Or you should have representatives of the states, and they should be acting um, on the instruction of their people and expressing what represents the opinion and view of their people. So what are we going to have um, in such a conference? I would say you don't need to have the market women and the carpenters in such conference. Uh, you don't need to have a, a Nigerian teachers conference and uh, all other such uh, conferences and organizations. You want to have labor union, why? You don't need to have all that get representatives of the units of the entity and get experts, craftsmen, maybe political science association of Nigeria, Nigerian Bar Association, and experts that will help them to ensure that whatever decision they are reaching as a constituent people are put in that document in a manner that best represents what they have in mind. And you can have a conference. Each time we want to have a conference, we'll bring in a large number of irrelevant um, representations into that place, and we just have a jamboree and go back. Uh, to make matters worse, we decide there are no go areas. Uh, these areas must not be touched, and that area must not be touched, and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, we end up with a jamboree, and we get back to square one. Hmm. What you need is the people who are involved to discuss critical issues about how they are going to live together as a nation, and then give them experts to assist them. So we've always gotten that issue of structure of the conference wrong. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, also, it's also been very wrong that we give no-go areas and decide that there, uh, there are subjects they should not treat and stuff like that. So when those subjects become an issue, who is going to handle them? 
Any nation that is serious writes out the rule of how the, their peoples are going to live together, and that's what constitutional conferences are for. Okay. Those are the things we need to change about our constitutional conferences. All right, and in closing, Mr. Dai Kayade, I'm coming back to you. Um, promises have been made, especially under the Buhari administration, to Nigerians for a better Nigeria. In fact, the Buhari administration rolled on the wings of these promises, uh, you know, promising to give us a change because obviously Nigerians seem to have been tired of the same old, same old. They promised to give us security, change the economy. I mean, they even gave us a, a you know, some form of restructuring report that was purely put together by the APC-led government. Have they kept that promise uh, so far? And in, go, in as we go forward, going forward from today, because I mean, the, the administration has just a few more years to go. Come 2023, they're handing over. Um, how do you think that posterity will judge the Buhari administration? Uh, is that for me? Yes, sir. Yeah. You see, I have my brother now just talking about constitutional conference. And then you're talking about how we, so mother thing, whatever, whatever we live up. You see, the question is this. Who organizes that constitutional conference? Is it today we have been having conferences in this country? So they say that we even have along the line, uh, like the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Committee that they had in Africa, uh, South Africa. We had such in Nigeria here that time during the reign of Obama's job. What came out of it? The one we are now having Lord and that as regards to answer, what are we seeing? We could see what happened in Lagos of recent. So going forward. Where right, or people somewhere are now saying they should do this, people are saying they should not do that. So and it nearly, it, nearly, it nearly resulted into another destruction, destruction within the society. So who, the question is, who organizes the conference? In closing, are you with me? In closing, now, Mr. Dyer, we don't have time. All we need to do in this country is so simple. Let us start. I mean, let us stop saying Baba Sope, that is this man is saying this is where he should go. No. We need to look at what are the needs and aspirations of the people. Okay. And when we are able to get the needs and aspirations of the people, we now need to look inwards. Who and who has the capacity? Who and who has the character? All right. Who and who has the compassion? Mr. Kaede, we're out of time. Unfortunately, we have to wrap this conversation up. Uh, but I want to say thank you very much to Kune Lawo. I want to say thank you to Professor Richard Wakocha and Mr. Daya Kaede for being part of this conversation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, before we come back, we want to see what Nigerians have to say about the state of Nigeria's democracy. And, of course, when we return, we'll be talking about the PDP. Stay with us. Nigerian democracy, we still have a long way to go. Most of our politicians are not doing anything to alleviate our problem. The problem is still there up to now. Look at the society. No work. All the social amenities are not there. They were just there sharing the whole thing within themselves. They are not doing anything to, to elevate our property, most especially the masses. They need to do something. See the insecurity in the country. Every day kidnapping, banditry, everywhere. What are they doing there? Sitting there, doing nothing. They should rise up to the task. That's just my own. We are not practicing democracy as far as I'm concerned. They say democracy is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So in any country that people cannot express their view, people cannot enjoy their freedom, will you call that democracy? So as far as I'm concerned, Nigeria is not practicing democracy. Maybe if there is any other name you can give to it. Nigerian democracy is good. I'm not, I can't say it's bad. But the way forward, despite... Um, the things that is going on right now, um, if, I have, if I have opportunity to talk to our, gov our government, it's just that it just comes in unity. 
and um, see how they can transform Nigeria to a better place and stop discrimination and sell uh, politi uh, political uh, issues about um, saying that uh, it's just embezzling money by themselves alone, forgetting about the masses. So let the government come together and see the way of helping the poor, the, 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 the poor people in the society. What is going on now in church for now? Everybody is just totally disappointed on what is going on in Nigeria. Based on one thing or the other, the government are no longer helping. That's all the fact. So I don't really have much on, on it, but being, let Nigeria put yourself together, you know, being a good, uh, good leadership. We need a, a, leader, a good leadership in Nigeria. Well, we'll take you back to a conversation we had some days ago with the, AP, the PDP, I beg your pardon, in a number of states and, of course, the issues that they are facing in picking a candidate for their gubernatorial elections. Let's take a look.